Good morning and welcome to our KTI webinar this morning. So this Unlocking Knowledge Transfer series has been designed to highlight different aspects of knowledge transfer and R&D in Ireland. So this morning we're looking at um, Ireland's expertise in sports technology and we've brought together a great panel for you this morning. So they are as follows, Gronia Barry, Director and Co-Founder at Sports Tech Ireland and Senior VP of Global Operations at Stats Perform. We're also joined by Mark Ganley, CEO of NPRO. Ashling O'Neill, Manager of Arc Labs Research and Innovation Centre at Waterford Institute of Technology, and Dara Whelan, Chief Scientific Officer and Co-Founder at Output Sports. So um, this webinar will be recorded. If you miss any aspects of it, it'll be available on our KTI uh, website in a number of days. And we'd also welcome any questions that you may have. Please submit them through the Q&A box on your screen. And with that, I'm going to pass over to Vincent Moll, our moderator for this morning. Thanks indeed, Siobhan, and uh, welcome everybody. I'm really looking forward to this particular chat as a failed sports person myself. Uh, great to see the huge advancements in, in sports tech in Ireland. And on this point, I, I think we might start with you, Gráinne. Uh, you're the co-founder of Sports Tech, uh, a not-for-profit body established to uh, as an, advo uh, an advocacy uh, body for, for growing sports tech here and, and getting the thing, getting momentum behind the whole sector. Why do you think uh, sports tech, and, and we have some wonderful uh, entrepreneurs here uh, waiting to join us in the chat later, Dara and Mark, but why do you think sports tech has taken off to such a degree in Ireland over the last five, six years? Well, I think there's a, there's a lot of reasons for that, Vincent. You know, um, partly it's because of the FDI activity. So the IDA has done a wonderful job, I suppose, in attracting uh, foreign direct investment into the company. So there's now a, 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 sc a scalable um, ecosystem here, you know, Stats Perform, DraftKings, Thrive Global, Whoop, that actually, you know, it's building its own momentum. Um, at the same time, we have um, a lot of new entrepreneurs coming into the space. We reckon about 100 companies currently in, in the market in Ireland. And really, it's because the industry of sport has changed. You know, sport itself accounts for about 1% of all global GDP. So it's significant in economically, but also culturally and socially. But the big change has been, you know, sports teams, leagues, broadcasters have embraced digital and new technologies. And that's really been the game changer. It's now becoming a business and really as a technology industry, it's moving mainstream. And, and do you think that on top of that, as an overlay almost, that there has been a, and it's, 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 I suppose it's, it's, I need to be sensitive in how I put this, but there's been a, a benefit from, from the COVID period that uh, oh, yeah, all sorts of people are focusing on, 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 on the sports and wellness area. Yeah, without a doubt, I mean, the last two years really has accelerated that change that was happening. Really for, for two reasons. One is people are either tuning in for more sports, you know, from the entertainment perspective, or actually they're just turning to sport, you know, and they've had that time to actually think about participation and getting fitter and all that. So it's been a real change for the industry and the business opportunity has, has come out of that. And I know from a Sports Tech Ireland perspective, we probably had triple the inbound queries over that period um, in terms of people who are starting a sports technology business in Ireland. Actually, I might come to you then because you've you've tested on the ground there in the southeast in the Waterford region. You've tested the the, the types of ideas that are out there amongst budding entrepreneurs uh, and and the type of commercialization potential for for some of the the innovative ideas in sports tech and the wellness sector generally. Tell us about the um, the, the the accelerator uh, program that you had in WIT last autumn. Thank you, Vincent. And um, good morning, everyone. Um, so yeah, we, we ran Sportex, uh, a pre-accelerator program for sports and wellness technology businesses um, in the autumn. So we, we culminated with a, a, an investor showcase in December, and it really was wonderful to see the companies coming together and the level of interest that there was in, the, in that particular vertical, um, which I suppose revealed to us how, I suppose, accurate our, our assessment was that it was a good avenue for us to pursue. Um, so how it came about was that we had run a pilot program for three years um, of an accelerator for the Southeast region, and there were some residual funds in the, in the partnership. And so with permission from Enterprise Ireland and our partners, we looked at um, running a pre-accelerator program, but we wanted to give it a specific focus. 
So uh, Arc Labs are, are, well, we have sites in Waterford and Kilkenny, but our, our primary site here uh, where I'm sitting today uh, is in Waterford's um, West Campus of WIT in Carrigonore. And I suppose if, if we look at the composition of the campus, we see how ripe it is for us to focus on sports technology. So at the entrance to the campus, you have the WIT Arena, which is a world-class sports facility and um, that we have here that has even held the, the World GAA Games um, in, in previous years. And we also have now established the UPMC Sports Medicine Unit in that facility also. We have the Nutrition Research Centre of Ireland. Um, we have then Arc Labs in, in this building here um, and shared here. We, uh, we are with the Walton Institute, which is our ICT research group. Uh, so really, we were kind of looking at how we could look at this um, kind of environment or ecosystem that we have here and capitalise on it. And sure enough, you know, when we put out the call, we had 50 applications and, and there was no investment associated with this program. Um, there was just a real appetite for these types of companies to come together um, and learn together within this kind of pre-accelerator format. Um, so within the Walton Institute, we have a number of technology uh, domains that we support. So we have test beds in e-textiles, in virtual reality, mixed reality, uh, in data analytics, you know, and, and those technologies can underpin uh, these companies so well. Um, so, so it's just been really, really interesting to see the level of interest and to see the 10 companies that came through from all over the country. You know, it wasn't just it wasn't just Waterford or the Southeast, you know, and I think I saw Emma saying hello to us all from Galway. Emma was one of our participants and traveled to Waterford uh, a couple of times through the program. So it really just just show how we can develop um, a sports technology focus for the whole of Ireland. And would you agree with Bronnie that there's, that there's a whole range of factors there as to why there is such interest and such activity in this sector now here, but, you know, that there's the, the innovation and, and, and the, the, um, the development in digital, but also just Irish people's interest in sport generally? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it was a sector that was ripe for disruption, and, and I think we have seen that disruption coming with these technological interventions that make, you know, a lot of the, the sort of very manual work you know that would be associated with sports and um, particularly from the entertainment side you know and the analytics piece you know we we can have the technologies now to underpin them um, and you'll hear from the guys around around performance and protection of athletes as well you know there is just so much that can be done now um, and there's just such a brilliant ecosystem in Ireland around the knowledge and skills to support those innovations. We, we, we've heard from Grania and Ashley, they're broadly setting out some of the reasons why this is such an exciting sector at the moment. We'll come back to both of you in, in a minute about the, the type of supports that are out there in the ecosystem and how they may even improve. But let's get to some of the some of the, the practitioners on the ground, the entrepreneurs on the ground. We might start with you, Mark, uh, with, 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 with NPRO. Uh, you set that up with your wife, what, nearly eight years ago now. So you've been in this game a long time. Tell us what NPRO does. A lot of us would have seen uh, the branding on some of the headgear worn by the Ireland internationals at the weekend. Yeah, so uh, we, we set up the company back in uh, 2014. Um, I suppose prior to, prior to developing NPRO, uh, I had developed a range of hurling helmets. So that gave me an awful lot of experience in terms of impact protection, different test methodologies, different materials that were out there. Um, but what I suppose what got me started on this whole journey was an interview that I read a number of years ago with John Fogarty, the, uh, the current Irish scrum coach. And I suppose what really caught my attention there was um, he was forced to retire through multiple head injuries in rugby. And what caught my attention really was the human aspect of the story where he was spending days in a darkened bedroom and couldn't face his wife or his children. Um, so, you know, I just thought, you know, this this is a very, very alarming story here. Um, and, you know, I believe that, that there's something that, that could possibly be done. So I came back and I started talking to my wife, uh, Sandra, about it. So Sandra has a, has a background in biomedical engineering and medical device innovation and, and clinical research. So that, that got us uh, started in 2014. And we said, you know, we looked at what was going on in the space and what were other companies doing. And we were up against, you know, global brands. So we said, if we're going to go about this, it's going to have to be in a very scientific manner, uh, you know, research focused. And yeah, we, it's been a long journey. Um, and as you said, great to see, you know, there was uh, Ireland playing Wales last Saturday uh, in the Aviva with four, four players out there. 
uh, wearing our product. Um, and something that we're, I suppose, very proud to say is that we've never paid any athlete to wear our product. Uh, they're all wearing it because of the, the impact protection that it's giving them um, and the comfort and fit of it. So in terms of other products that are out there, uh, in terms of rugby headgear, we can offer four times better impact protection. So it's uh, it's been a long journey. Um, and really, in a lot of ways, we're only at the beginning. So, yeah, because because you've 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 crossed a very significant hurdle now with with World Rugby, and they put you yeah. through the ringer before yeah. they signed you up as partner. Tell us about that collaborative project and where you think it'll go. Yeah, so I suppose when when people look at rugby headgear, uh, they would always assume that um, scrum caps, as a lot of people would would call them, that they've always been protective. Uh, when in fact they weren't, they were. They were designed for cuts and abrasions, uh, cauliflower ears, that type of thing. So we um, we developed MPRO specifically to give impact protection to players. Um, you know, World Rugby, we, we've had a, a long relationship with them now. Um, I suppose a concern that, that uh, World Rugby have had is, you know, they saw what happened in American football where hard-shelled helmets got introduced and head injuries actually increased because players started using them as weapons that were leading with the head. And it's, you know, I suppose World Rugby were worried that they have to be careful about what, um, what, what new equipment is allowed onto the field because there can be, you know, un, unforeseen consequences of that. So they, you know, we've had a long working relationship with them. They've uh, reviewed all of our data. Um, you know, they've had a lot of uh, different consultants uh, examining our data, et cetera. And we're now going to, um, we're going to start a, a very large uh, player trial with um, uh, next June. Uh, we're, we're kicking that off. So, uh, yeah, it's an exciting time for us. And a lot of those clinical trials you hope will take place in Ireland. Yeah, we're in we're in talks at the moment uh, with uh, a number of research uh, organisations um, and uh, teams, etc. So yeah, the uh, the uh, the uh, the view at the moment is to run those trials here in Ireland. We're you know we're an Irish company founded here. We've done an awful lot of our research here. Uh, very proud of our Irish roots, and uh, yeah, we'd we'd love to love to run those trials here. So at the moment, that's that's the uh, that's the plan. Congratulations on getting it, and the very best of luck with it. Dara, Dara Whelan, thanks for your patience in, in waiting for us there. You're uh, the chief scientific officer and one, I think, of, of co-founders of Output Sports based in the Nova Institute at, at UCD. Slightly younger company than, than, than NPRO, but I think 2017. Tell us what, what Outsport, Output Sports does. Great. Yeah, thanks, May and Vince, and thanks uh, for KTI for uh, allowing us to speak today with it as well. So our kind of grandiose mission statement at Output Sports is to make sport, elite sports science um, more simple and widely accessible than ever previously possible. And the predominant way we're doing that at the moment is through the use of wearable sensing technologies and actually camera technology, vision-based technology, as a mechanism of measuring performance in predominantly an off-field setting, so in a gym or a rehab environment with it as well. Um, and providing people with, I guess, object, object, objective information around how they're progressing through those processes of strengthening or rehabilitation. Um, and it's funny when you say that we're a younger company, it's actually not necessarily completely true. I'm, I, you saw my line, by the way, Vincent, I always introduced myself as a failed athlete as well, and that's why I got involved in sports. And we would have worked as a physiotherapist predominantly in sports for years with it. And then I actually went back to do, I came pretty frustrated, I guess, by the subjectivity in a lot of performance testing, return to play testing. That led me to doing research back in 2013, which is probably the genesis, I guess, of, of Output Sports as a company as well. Myself and one of my co-founders, Martin O'Reilly, we started our PhDs at the same time where we were looking at wearable sensing technology as a mechanism of measuring performance across a wide spectrum of athletes. And uh, that was, as I say, the, the underpinning of a lot of what we do at Output with it as well. We kind of transferred then across from that to um, an Enterprise Ireland Commercialization Fund, which was really pivotal, basically, in allowing us the, the time to, to grow the company and, and actually really importantly bringing on our third co-founder as well, uh, Julian Everly, with it as well. Um, and then we launched the business and started trading in February 2020, which whenever I say that now, I always smile if people can think back to then. We got our seed funding in place from um, Atlantic Bridge and Elkstone and, and some great angel investors in Enterprise Ireland, obviously, as well. Uh, got ourselves ready to go and uh, go out and sell our product with it. And a month later, we're battling the, the strangest time, I think, sports, never mind, sorry, the world, never mind sports has ever seen with it. 
Um, but we've been lucky even through that process that we've managed on board teams right across from uh, Premier League teams, MLB teams in the States with it, uh, international rugby teams, all the way down to physio clinics and performance centers as well. And, and I guess really actioning on our, our goal. So for, for, for both elite athletes and for people just trying to do the best they can in their, in their local gym. Yeah, and cycle up the hill faster than their mate. Like that's legitimately some of the use cases that we've seen on it as well. We kind of see everyone has a performance goal and that goal might be to play, you know, wing for Ireland or that goal might be to run a 5K faster um, than, um, than people on Strava. And in order to achieve that with it, you do need elements of conditioning uh, and obviously hopefully not, but very likely rehabilitation along that journey. And our technology, we believe, gives people the uh, ability to track that progress, the progress along the same. Ron, you're coming back to you. Um, sports tech, the, the, the advocacy group that, 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 that you founded and head up, uh, <laughs> is trying to support the whole sector at, at various levels, from startups to, to growth companies, putting, putting people in touch with, with uh, research institutes, with uh, with uh, with. Uh, companies like Enterprise Ireland uh, and Knowledge Transfer yeah. Ireland, whatever. How important is it though? Because you wear another hat uh, with, with with Stats Perform, the, the US company uh, whose MEA headquarters are, are, are in Ireland. How important, like many other sectors in Ireland, is that drive and momentum that that the overseas companies based here in the sector have given? Ah, uh, you know, it's, it's it's a huge catalyst for for Ireland to have the the, the large FDIs on the ground. I mean, SAS Perform, for example, we, we employ 250 people here in Limerick, and we're just one example of them FDI. So it's driving the culture, the, the cluster takes a number of things, you know. So it needs the support of our organizations like IDA, Enterprise Ireland, on the ground here, Sports Tech Ireland has um, support from Limerick County Council, partnered with Dell and, and some of the, the um, technology companies. So to enable us to do that and position Ireland as a place where an FDI will come, or it's a good place to start a business is, is key. You know, where you have people like Mark and Dara, you know, and companies like Oracle and Kitman who are threading um, the path in front of them, you know, internationally by scaling. That's what actually helps the, you know, the athletes who have been, got an idea or the entrepreneur who wants to, to, to grow their own business. So it all works, you know, you need education, partnerships, research, and all of that coming together is what makes a strong cluster, you know, because people want to, you know, hang out with people who are in their domain, you know, that's where you get the learning, that's where you get the access to customers, and um, that's where you get the network and, you know, you avoid the pitfalls for people in, in front of you. So certainly we see it that, you know, success enables success and FGI particularly, you know, they grow the talent. You know what I mean? They come, they come to Ireland because we have that, ta that talent on the ground. You know, you mentioned earlier about our passion for sport and sport very much is in, in the Irish DNA. You know, we're, we're interested in lots of different sports, you know, great fans, high participation rates. And that's the reason why FDI has come here, you know, and also that piece around education. You know, we, we produce great athletes. You know, you got to look at Kay Taylor, Leon McGuire, the Irish rugby team. But actually, people forget we also produce great analysts, you know, and, and the GA particularly has spurned a whole industry of people who do um, sports analysis. So one of the things we like to see is how do we develop that into data scientists and, um, you know, more sports scientists? How do we give them pathways? So talent definitely for us is a unique thing that Ireland can bring to the, to the table with your FDI or a startup company. That's, that's an interesting backdrop because it's, it's one of the questions that I might get to the, the, the two uh, entrepreneurs we have with us here. Because it would seem to me that Gron has just said that, that you know, it's, apart from our interest in sport and I suppose our growing leaders in, in international sport generally, um, we are a very small country population wise and we don't have a big professional sports base other than rugby, I suppose. So, Dara, you know, uh, how come we are producing company, really successful companies like yours and Mark's on the international stage uh, without that? ecosystem that support ecosystem of a, of a big professional sports base yeah there, there may not be the teams there actually is a good support ecosystem i think we've alluded to a lot of them there as well so enterprise ireland were really important to us during the process nova ucd where we spun out of was really important in us transitioning from a research entity into commercial um uh, product with it as well but I also think it is, there's, there's a, an awful lot of talent in Ireland and the, the type of things that are important to make a good sports technology company in uh, engineers, computer scientists and sports scientists. We produce really, really good uh, individuals in those spaces. 
Uh, and actually, we would have worked for our PhDs were done was in the Insight Center for Data Analytics. And the whole concept of that, my co-founder Martin is an engineer by, by background, with a huge interest obviously in sports with it as well. But the idea was getting people at the um, inception of, of problems, practitioners maybe who had um, needs to work with uh, individuals who maybe have much more technical names than I do in order to try and make those a reality. And um, so that, that was a really important process with it as well. And again, as we kind of alluded to there with it as well, I think there's an element of seeing other Irish companies doing it um, mm. on the world stage. Um, they're saying before, I can't turn on a rugby match now, but it's one of Mark's headgears with it as well. It's been brilliant. And realizing that that's a company based out of Ireland and seeing their, their growth and other, um, uh, other companies' growth gives us, I guess, confidence that we can do the same um, from our base with it as well, which is great. Any thoughts on that, Mark? I mean, obviously, rugby where you're concentrating the defend tech product we are we, we, we have a very strong profile there and we are very successful at the moment and hopefully that will continue but just in terms of that of that lack of a, a sufficient other uh, professional sporting base it doesn't seem to be holding us back no um like i think when when we started the company we um we started off on the the enterprise ireland uh, new frontiers program and then went through you know competitive start fund and hbsu and you know something that was hammered into us all along the journey was you know you you have to export you have to get off the island um you know because there is a, a limited market here yeah i think one of the great things about about being irish is you can go to any city in the world and there's an irish diaspora um you know and they're all hugely helpful um, you know, I mean, we're all very proud of, of where we come from. And certainly with us, we've seen any market that we've tried to enter. There is Irish people there that have unbelievable connections and they're all willing to help you. Um, and it's just a matter of getting out there and asking people for help. They're, uh, they're all more than willing to help. Um, like, for instance, we went to, uh, you know, as you said, we're, we're concentrating on, on rugby with the product. But we went to Australia um, a couple of years ago. Enterprise Ireland office was a huge help to us there. And um, we've had a lot of people take up uh, the product in Aussie rules down there now. Um, you have a massive rugby league uh, base down in Australia, like rugby union would be a, a much smaller sport down mm. there. So there's, you know, there's plenty of other applications for our product, but everywhere we've gone, there has been, you know, a, an appetite to help us. Um, and, and I, I would recommend every other company to do the exact same. There's, a, you know, Enterprise Ireland have a network all over the world. Um, you know, there's, there isn't a country I don't think that they, they aren't represented in. So, uh, yeah, there's huge helps for, for startup companies. Ashley, how important in this whole, I mean, you, you obviously represent the WIT specifically, but how important in this whole growing area, and I might come to Grania on the same, on the same question, is the the support that the academic institutions that the the researchers the research groups within academic institutions and the technology centers that link our academic institutions with startup even with just people with ideas or startups or growing companies how important is that whole ecosystem to the the the, the, the health and future of sports tech in ireland well, I think, Vincent, it's pretty fundamental to it. You know, I mean, if you listen to Dara and Mark, they've both referenced all of the Enterprise Ireland supports that they have accessed. And certainly for us, you know, in Waterford, you know, we have three technology gateways, which is an Enterprise Ireland mechanism for industry to engage with the knowledge and infrastructure in the Institute. So if you think of a very early stage company, so for instance, some of the, the companies that have have gone through our Sportex pre-accelerator just before Christmas are now engaging in innovation vouchers and innovation partnerships with the gateway, which means that they're able to access a, a level of infrastructure and a level of knowledge and insight without the kind of the risk of having to invest completely in that. And, and I think that's what's really, really key as people start out on the start out journey on, on the startup journey, because so many startups, you know, I I, I don't like the word fail, but you know, the whole idea of pre-accelerators oh, is, is, you know, is um is, is to look at uh, fail, fail, fail faster, um, so that you're gone through the process very, very quickly to pivot, right? To pivot to what is going to work. Because I think, you know, Dara and Mark both referenced the importance of the problem that they were solving. 
And, and when you have a, a significant problem, I, I particularly like Mark's uh, emotive, um, you know, background to the, the problem because we can all relate to that. Like, you know, we can relate to a family member being really unwell and not being able to engage in their normal lives. And so if you have something that can solve that for people, that's really, really powerful. Um, so that's the whole idea of these infrastructures is to de-risk the process of testing the assumptions of, of the entrepreneurs that are coming through. Um, and so I think it, you know, it's it's important to engage with Enterprise Ireland, with the likes of KTI, with the likes of you know, centers like Arc Labs that can kind of signpost you to the best support for your startup at the stage that you're at. Or Siobhan, who, who's listening in silently, will remind us at the end of, of this session of the KTI website and, and all the funding supports that are there, whether it's a, a sports tech idea or project or otherwise that you have, including innovation uh, vouchers. And um, Grania, we're going to slip in some of the many questions we've got from the audience in advance, and they're coming in as well. But one I have here is, um, and I think it's, 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 it's for you to a degree, like what further development is required to ensure Ireland stays ahead of the game? as a location for sports industry investment? Interesting question, Vincent, and I suppose my own view would be we're not ambitious enough, really. Um, like, for example, I give you a few. The Danish, Danish government, similar country-sized ours, has published an esports strategy, so a national strategy for a particular vertical. Um, I also think on, on the education front, you know, we don't have any sports technology undergrad in the country, you know, so, and, and we would be talking to universities about that for a while, and, I see Ken on, on the call there from Nana Kenny and they've done great work there. And there's, there's pockets of things, but I think we need a joined up strategy about education. And going back to uh, Mark's point about the diaspora everywhere, like we would export some of the best um, performance analysts right across the world, you know, in, in rugby Australia, Japanese rugby, et cetera. And the pathways for people who come out of sports science and can see this career within the sports technology industry is a huge one. So I think that we, we need to do more in terms of our digital strategy and actually where we go that that the talent and how we get you know layers and insights involved in, in more you know cross-function and cross organization um projects so we can actually drive really opportunities for for, for Ireland particularly around data analysis esports and even things like cyber security and privacy opportunity there there's an opportunity in Ireland to be a, a test bed for stadium tech and um, there's also a huge growth in women, women's um, analytics, particularly women's sport. So there's opportunities that I think that Ireland can choose to lean into some specific ones that really we can we can take a, a market leading position in. And that you know, rugby tech is obviously one of them. The and in, your view, in your view, does that have to be a top down approach that the government needs to set a strategy in place and then you know get all this all the support networks, including including some that are obviously working very well already. All on the one team. I th yeah, I think it's, uh, generally it, it should be the, the organisations like IDA, EI, the government sports strategy, organisations like, like Sports Tech Ireland, the industry itself, you know, and then uh, obviously the, the research centres on the third level. Ideally, that, that um, collaboration of all of them, and that I suppose, you know, what we want to do is, cast, is be a catalyst for that, bring that all together and say, this is opportunities for, for Ireland, you know, both from an indigenous industry and also to track further FDIs and to grow that talent pool. Mark and Dara, I want to come back to you about the about the the investor environment uh, for for companies like yourselves. You're you're both very successful now, but you both started perhaps when this sector was still very embryonic. Is there growing investor appetite there, both from a the private sector in terms of angel or or, or uh, uh, further up the chain, and then the, the various state supports as well? Have you found those helpful? Is the growing appetite? Dara, yeah, they've been yeah, they've been obviously huge in the development of the company and allowing us to expand both our team and our, our reach and commercial traction with it as well. So yeah, since its inception, the fact that we were like I was funded through Science, Science Foundation Ireland through the PhD with it as well, and luckily had a very um, uh, great supervisor who was really keen on getting Brian Caulfield, who was really keen on getting that um, research out into a, a commercial environment uh, i say commercial there but i didn't do practitioners hands that's what we always envisaged it as um and so that that was obviously really key at the start to get that phd funding and also to have a, a supervisor who was allowing me to go on course around commercialization which wouldn't have a direct link into the research that i was doing but could see what where our interests lay 
And then subsequent from that with it at Enterprise Ireland, obviously the commercialization fund was huge. It really was. And, and one thing we kind of chatted there a, a lot, we were really keen on building prototypes of technologies and getting them to the hands of practitioners with it. <clears throat> there wasn't any point, I guess, in operating in a vacuum where we thought we had a really good idea and then we weren't actually stress testing that with practitioners using the technology as well. So that was one really important thing to us. We basically prototyped with around <clears throat> it was 40 plus different practitioners in a lot of elite sports, actually predominantly UK, uh, Ireland, you kind of alluded to at the start, yeah. Ireland professional sporting bodies quite small with it as well. So we actually did a lot of work in the UK and actually some in the US and they turned into our first customers as well um, with it as well. So that breeding space to get that right was a really important um, uh, fundraise, um, a really important part, part of the journey. And then beyond that, actually raising the finance with it as well, we've been lucky, we've been backed by, by great investors in Atlantic Bridge and Elkstone and <clears throat> Enterprise Ireland and then Angel Investors, inclusive of uh, some of the athletes. And, and, and are, they, are they interested in the sector or your specific product? Uh, I don't want to answer it there behalf. <laughs> I would hope, it, I, I think any investor invests where there needs to be both. There's team, market and, um, and product basically as well. And I think that they're pivotal to understand like so they can see the product, but if you don't have a good team putting that together or figuring out or there isn't a market, it's harder to get investment if you are going to get investment. And you could play that right across that spectrum with it as well. So I do think market definitely plays into it and there has been an explosion in terms of quantified self in, in general in, in wellness and in sports with it as well. And I think that definitely plays into why investments may um, people are interested in it and Again, um, Grania and Ashley and Mark will have like, great insights into that market and how it's booming with it as well. But we can all point to market reports showing massive growth in the industry and in the sector with it as well. But I think you would have to have, I would feel, a good team and, and at the inception of a good product that, to enter that market to get that investment. So it's not just market, but that definitely factored into their thinking. And you're, you're close to closing off a, a two to three million euro funding round at the moment. But if, if there's anybody out there looking in at the moment, yeah, there is still a, there's still opportunity for them. For yourself as well, Vincent. Don't, don't forget that. Um, send over the perspective straight away. <laughs> You've been misinformed as to what people like myself are paid. <laughs> I'll certainly have a good look at your uh, your prospectus. Fine. Mark, you, you go back to, to 2014 and there was a long, I think, three-year R&D process uh, with, 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 with academic support as well, I think, in Belfast and, uh, and overseas. How did you find that, that, that funding environment and has it, has it improved? Has it become uh, broader? Yeah, so I suppose, as I mentioned earlier, we, we started off on the New Frontiers program um, and then we, we started raising money after that uh, through, through angels, um, all, all based here in Ireland. Um, and then, you know, as we, as we progressed the company, we got into bigger rounds and we brought in, um, you know, WDC, um, Elkstone, et cetera. But certainly at the beginning, it was all angel money, um, angel money and Enterprise Ireland that, that, uh, that we raised. Um, you know, in terms of the appetite, yeah, absolutely. There was, there was you know, a huge appetite. And, uh, you know, you, you asked a question there of Dara as to whether it was the, the product or the, or the sport. Mm. Um, I think, you know, there needs to be both, um, definitely, because, uh, you know, a lot of these are, are very experienced, experienced angels. Um, something that I would love to see develop um, would be a sports specific uh, angel syndicate like you know there's already a, there's a there's a med tech syndicate there's a food syndicate etc you know if you're starting a um, a business in one of those sectors you you know where to go straight away whereas with us it was very much out there um mm -hmm. you know meeting with individual angels um who would then you know it was a, it was a yes or a no and then they might recommend somebody else so it 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 just slowed down the whole process um and can we as a can we as a country do anything to help develop that sort of a, a, an angel syndicate for sports tech or is it something that has to evolve as, as the sector grows globally um i think there's plenty of people here who you know have been very successful um you know in their business careers that that have had a had a sporting background um it would be interesting to see you know does uh Will will a, a sports specific angel uh, syndicate develop over the next few years? Because uh, 
I think you know we we've seen the seen the numbers. There's a huge amount of uh, businesses starting up in this sector, um, and it's there's there's a big opening there. Um, I I believe um, for for a, a specific syndicate, it would it would help the whole industry, definitely. Actually, I, I know, like Gronje, well, I presume you wear all sorts of hats, but the hats that I know about, you wear another hat as well. You're, you're president of Network Ireland, which is a, a body that, that seeks to, to develop uh, women in Ireland, both their, on the enterprise side and their personal lives and careers. There must be a huge growth area in the whole wellness and health stroke sports area for, for women and, and in all sorts of ways, including you know, the, the type of, 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 of clothing and everything that's, that's, uh, that, 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 that's required and that's best for not just women, but men, but obviously as more women uh, get into, in, into the whole fitness and wellness and health area, uh, there must be huge potential there. That broad definition of sports tech Certainly, yeah. I, I suppose I should probably um, just correct you there. I have handed over the chains oh, of uh, Network Ireland, so I no longer hold responsibility <laughs> for the organisation. So that's moved to Noreen well, McKenzie. Yeah. Uh, yeah, to Noreen McKenzie in Galway, who is a huge sports aficionado. So Good. she she would love to uh, to be chatting to you about all things sports tech. Um, but yeah, certainly. And I mean, look, we, we would definitely have had Sharon Keegan, you know, from uh, Peachy Lean would have engaged with us. And, and we definitely, see a huge uh, like within the the kind of composition of of network ireland we'd have a a great variety of um like business types that are represented but certainly we would have an awful lot of of wellness coaches and and women who are pursuing those careers and facilitating wellness and how they can integrate technology in that is obviously obviously critical to and the scale that they can bring their businesses to. So it's yeah. certainly something that we're looking at and within any of the kind of conferences and events that we hold, you will find there's always, you know, a, a, an element or a panel around sports and how we can support uh, women in sport. Gronje, obviously there are the, the state agencies, our host KTI, Enterprise Ireland, uh, Sound Science Foundation Ireland, but anybody out there who's either tuned in or somebody talking to somebody who's tuned in who may have a sports tech idea in the broadest sense how could sports tech ireland help them in some way i mean can you actually help people who might have an idea tell them which way to go put them in touch with mentors perhaps uh, that kind of support can you give us some ideas as to, as to should they approach you yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's our bread and butter. I suppose up until this year, we've been volunteer led. Um, but thankfully, to the support we have, we now have our first employee on the ground, who's who, um, Andrew Walken, who joined us from UL Sport. So that's specifically what she does. So, for example, our main thing would be helping Indigenous industry. So um, people who are looking for a mentor or looking for a connection in the industry it could be a test customer it look, could be like i'm looking to start the funding rounds and we put them in touch with people who have done that so either holding up new frontiers route how the enterprise aren't going to walk them through some of that and um, so this year for example we would um educate it's a big pillar of what we do so we start a master class spring series next week where we have um sam mccleary who's ex uh, corporate innovation at under armor he's speaking around media broadcast specifically um, we have a hackathon planned in rugby for April and um, we're also doing two reports this year. One is on talent and skills development in partnership with Digital Skills Net Ireland and the second one is our first industry report and that's part of how do we profile the industry and say that it's here. You know, show for example where, where's the landscape of FTIs, Indigenous companies, what are we producing as an island in terms of our 20% of our companies female founded, you know, our 30% of them in the analytics industry, you know, where are they located between Waterford, Cork, Galway, Belfast, etc. to show what we're doing as an industry mm. and how it's positioning itself. Because there's no doubt the industry is exploding and for loads of key trends. Um, and we want to show that Ireland's a place where, where people should do business. Dara, and I think it was something Mark, we discussed with both Mark and yourself just before the conversation started, just the importance of being so close to the UK, actually, both in terms of its population size, its professional sports base, I suppose the fact that we actually might also be benefiting from a little bit of the of the brass Brexit after effect. Yeah, we would have had, particularly during our, our kind of prototype discovery phase, we would have engaged an awful lot with British sporting teams uh, along that process with it as well. And you've been over think, of your league teams on board, haven't you? Yeah, we do. I think it's five now, which has been brilliant. Like, it's kind of surreal to think about the tech being used in those environments with it and the same things you're watching on a Saturday or a Sunday, uh, similar to Mark as well. 
But um, but but I, to be honest with you, I think the key win and for us as a company as well is on the states with it as well. So while Brexit is an impact, and listen, it'd be easier probably if it didn't exist in lots of lots of uh, different forms of life beyond just sports technology. Um, the big win for us is around the US with the scale of the opportunity there is ginormous. We, we would have been aware of that prior to, to um, even launching Output as a business. And then we weren't able to travel for two years across there. And literally just before Christmas, and then um, the guys, the my other two co founders, went across in uh, January. We had two trips one to LA and then one to uh, Texas, basically, with it as well. And seeing the scale of the opportunity where high school environments over there would have facilities that are, you know, a, akin to like beyond professional sporting teams and organizations yeah. we would have seen in the UK and Ireland with it as well. That to us is going to be a huge portion of um, our uh, uh, energies, I guess, over the next period of time and, and hence part of the fundraise as well to, to really expand into that area with it as well. So yeah, while Brexit is a little bit of a headache with it as well, to be honest with you, the big scale for opportunity is in the US with it and, and subsequently in Europe as well. Yeah, and we saw just talking about the, 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 the huge potential and scale of the US market, our congratulations to uh, is it Stat Sports of Newry who, who announced a, a very significant deal. They, they'd be more on, on field, uh, uh, you're, you're more off field in gym, but they signed a big deal this week, or at least they announced it this week with, with uh, the American Youth Soccer Organization, which I think have 3 million players. Yeah. Hundred percent, and it's a good example. I think they've had something similar before with it as well. But that's a really good example, I guess, of, of Irish companies yeah. um, growing in in that area with it as well, and showing, I guess, what's achievable to so them. Kitman have expanded obviously massively and are raising large finance, but as well, Arco have been like brilliant in terms of they how they've expanded the states. Is, that million and one that we can name probably on the call here with it as well. But I guess seeing those type of things makes us really confident that we shouldn't be able to hold back with it. We're an exporting country with it as well. And we should not feel in any way um, uh, overall by the opportunity that an Irish company and success it can have there as well. I'm conscious that we're getting close to the end of our time. So I might just conclude uh, a tour de table, starting with yourself, Mark, just on that note that obviously more and more focus on the Irish market with those great success stories, your own Dara's uh, stat sports kit man, as you say, drawing more attention to the skills expertise uh that that we have here for a small country how do we keep this momentum going do you think um great question i think yeah we've we have had uh we've had some great success stories and uh you know a lot of ways it's it's about you know who who were the first to kind of break new ground and i think it it certainly will it you know it makes it easier for for other companies to follow um you know i think Certainly, you know, something I mentioned earlier was, you know, building on the on the networks that have that have already been there and done it. Um, because certainly anyone that I've come across has been has been more than willing to help. And I think it's a very important message to get out there because a lot of the time, you know, entrepreneurs when they're starting off, um, you know, they can almost be too protective of their idea and they're scared that somebody's going to steal it when in fact if you actually get out there and talk. Um, you know, you can you can keep your your secret sauce hidden, but uh, just ask for help because there is so much help out there. Um, and certainly, I've had loads of help. Um, I suppose a lot of it, like I'm based here in Galway. You know, we have a large medtech um, kind of cluster here, and there is a huge amount of people there that are very very experienced in terms of international business and um, that have been more than willing to uh, to mentor and to and to help companies. So. That would be definitely one of my, um, you know, takeaway messages for people: uh, get out there and, and chat because everyone is everyone's willing to help you. Ashling, you know, you you obviously represent the southeast, and and, and the pre accelerator you had in the southeast showed the amount of talent and ideas there. But but effectively, all the regions of Ireland were, were one big cluster, and, and as Mark says, the the academic, the sporting facilities. The, the ideas, the collaborative, uh, the help from the, the state organizations, they're all there if people just, just ask. Exactly, exactly. So just, just reach out, get in touch, you know, even if it is just to send an email to me, if I'm not the person, I can direct you through our incubator network, you know, to wherever is relevant in the country. And like that, I think it's, it's a joint effort and, and how we can look at using the infrastructure we have to develop 
uh, these companies globally, because as Mark and, and Dara alluded to, you know, kind of geography is history here. You know, it's, it's the global market that we're looking at. Um, so, yeah, absolutely. Ask for help and, and take it from every corner that it's available. Gronya, are you optimistic? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I can certainly talk about track record and stats perform perspective when we've gone from strength to strength here. And I think the, there's there's plenty of opportunity in the growing market that's here. And this is all about a, a collaborative approach from government, you know, through education, through an industry. Um, and I think Ireland is a small country. Or we're good at that. Do you know what I mean? So um, I'd be very optimistic we're, we're as, an, as a country we can take, we can maximise the opportunity. Dara, I'll set you a challenge as the last uh, question. Um, have you come up with any technology yet to help Kildare win in all Ireland? <laughs> <laughs> Sit in research mode. I'm gonna, I'm gonna dodge that. Uh, I'm a dub as well. Please do. Dodge Please that, do. Uh, and actually, just um, pick up with something Mark said there, which I thought was yeah. really interesting, which is actually getting the technology out there. It can be. I remember the first time we built our first prototype and Julian, who's our CTO, kind of, we were handing it over. It's almost like handing over a baby <laughs> to get feedback on it. And I remember we were, it was actually in here in UCD, it was with um, um, the physio hub here. And um, he was basically like, oh, it's got this wrong with it. It's got that wrong with it. And I was like, let them tell us what's wrong with it. Because they're not, no one are expecting like a, an absolute perfect product at that stage with it as well. They're designed to learn about it. And that was far more interesting to us. What we learned from those 40, 50 test sites than what we ever did with developing it in ourselves with it. And then the other side of the advice that is, is try and then sell it to people, try and generate revenue, because that is another step with it. Everyone's really nice to help out on feedback, but then when you say, now we're going to charge you this for it, what's the feedback then? Are they going to purchase it? If not, they're the real learnings when you, when you get it. And actually, just that's one thing we found on the Com Fund was it was almost, so, the way the commercialization fund works is that we generate IP in the university, it's not ours, and then we assign it into the company when we, we launched the, the, the company. That means you actually can't sell um, anything or, uh, during the comp fund because the IP is still living in the university at that stage with it. And it's almost like there is a, a switch flicked at the end of that where it's now you go, just now go generate revenue, and then you start those conversations. It would be nice if there was, I guess, a transition point coming to the end of the commercialization fund going into a, a commercial entity where you could actually start to charge people and then just learn there. Well, you still have the relative shelter of the, of the campus. Exactly, yeah. Because everyone is so nice and everyone, you know, promises you, yeah, this suits you guys are a product. Well, I'm literally pressing go on this. And then all of a sudden it's, it's not our budgetary season just now. It'll have to wait six or seven months, but you haven't had to have that conversation at that stage until, you know, you've literally said, okay, let's go here with it or something like that. So that's just, that's such a key learning for us. One was actually taking the product out of our own hands and putting it into other people's hands with it. And two was then asking them to pay for it and then seeing how, um, and the learnings that you get from those were, were really key, I guess. That's, that, that's, that's particularly interesting. And uh, I know there's a lot of people from our research institutes probably tuned in. So it might be a follow-up uh, follow uh, issue that we might pick up on just how can we improve that transition period from the relative shelter and support of a, of a campus incubation center to, to the cold reality of the commercial world. It might be something we might pick up on again, but uh, this has been a fascinating conversation, folks. I've really enjoyed it. And thank you for, thank you for joining us, uh, Dara, Mark, Ashling, and Gronya. And I'll hand you back to Siobhan now of KTI to, to wrap up. Siobhan. Thank you, Vincent. And thank you to our panelists this morning for a really great discussion. We've got some great comments coming into our chat and we've also got some questions coming in as well. So if we haven't answered all your questions during the discussion, we will put them to the panelists afterwards and try and get you some, some answers to those. And also, as mentioned during the webinar, there are a lot of supports available for companies throughout the research base. And we would encourage you to reach out to your local university or Institute of Technology to help access research expertise, technology centers and funding available through Ireland. And the Knowledge Transfer Ireland website, knowledgetransferireland.com, has a lot of facilities to help it easier, to make it easier to access the system. So we have a funding tool there that helps you identify relevant public sector funding for your research project. We also have a tool where you can find the relevant research expert, navigate which centres have expertise in different technology areas. And it's a really great way of helping you know what expertise is out there in Ireland. 
So with that, I'd just like to thank our panelists again. We, our next webinar is on the 1st of March and we're going to be looking at building successful research consortia. So we hope you, you can join us for that. Thank you all. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye-bye.